Hey guys, welcome to another video on Ivory Dang. In today's video, I'd like to do a walkthrough with you on how to build a product landing page for a free code camp uh, responsive web design. So my final version of the pro project looked something like this. This video will have two parts. Uh, the first part of the video will show uh, the minimal coding to complete the project. And then in the second part of the video, I'd like to show you guys uh, how I added design and polishing to the project to uh, make the interface look more friendly. Again, with all projects, I like to do a full read through of the instructions to give me a high level outline of what I need to do. Uh, so my outline, when I jotted the notes down, looks something like this. Without further ado, uh, let's go ahead and get to our first task. Okay, so starting on our free cool camp main page with the list of assignments, so we'll click on uh, build a product landing page under responsive web design. It brings us to this page, so we'll just scroll down and we'll click on use this cold pen uh, link. We're just gonna click on that so we can grab the the run test script from free cool camp, and then we'll copy this control C, and then we'll paste it control V into a new. Uh, Cold pen editor just so we can run the test. So user story one says my product landing page should have a header ele element with a corresponding ID header. So in the last video I did it was 45 minutes long some people were saying that was too long so for the purpose of saving time and making this video more concise and more straight to the point for you guys I'm going to cut out uh, parts of the video where I'm typing the code and I will just show you guys what uh, code is needed and briefly explain about it and then uh, we'll just jump straight to the next next to the <laughs> jump straight to the next story so first story we just add a header element and then add in the id uh, quotation header quotation and then uh, as you remember html allows up to six headers we'll just use header one and then we can add something short something like our logo or brand so for me i added ivory dang user story two says i can see an image within the header element with a corresponding id equals to quotation header dash img quotation a company logo would make a good image here so what I did was in the header element, I added an IMG source uh, element to it. And then in that element, I added the attribute ID equals to quotation header dash IMG. So again, the IMG source element allows you to apply a picture onto your HTML uh, page. So source is just the link of that uh, picture. Alt is uh, what you want uh, to show if the link is not working, uh, border is what will be around the picture and then id uh, is something that you can reference when uh, styling with css and then the width will be the instruction on how big or essentially how wide the picture will be user story 3 says within the header element i can see a nav element with a corresponding id equals to quotation nav dash bar uh, quotation so this wants us to add a navigation bar within our html page so that's what I did here. I added the navigation element. However, for me, I wanted my uh, H1 logo brand to be within the navigation bar. So uh, within my navigation element, I added the H1 element. And then I added these NPSP. So each of these NPSP uh, represents a space. So three of these means uh, three spaces. And then below are A elements, which, which are linking, uh, which gives the ability for linking. Uh, and within each of these A elements, I applied the class attribute. So both the class attribute and the ID attribute can be used in CSS uh, for styling and formatting. So the difference between the two is that um, the ID attribute is used more often for like a specific element. You want to apply formatting and styling for a specific element versus um, the class attribute. It's something uh, it's a reusable format or styling that you want to apply to an element. So since all these three A elements are uh, within the navigation bar and we want to uh, maintain consistency for these links, uh, I applied the class attribute. And then for the href is our uh, linking reference. So uh, I don't want it to link to another page, I just want it to link within the same page. So that's why I uh, added hashtag. So this will allow us to jump to a section later in our video, like a later where we will add sections to our page and then use uh, the ID, for example, portfolio shop 
and my story. User Story 4 says I can see at least three clickable elements inside the nav element, each with the class nav link. So we performed this already uh, here, where we added the three A elements, which uh, provides the ability for linking. Uh, so again, just as a reminder, the ID attribute and the class attribute allows uh, referencing in CSS to apply formatting and styling. Uh, so in for ID in CSS, you will start with the hashtag, and then uh, to apply formatting to class attributes in CSS, you will start with a period. Okay, user story five says, when I click a nav link button in the nav element, I'm taken to the corresponding section of the landing page. So on the editor, we can start our body element, and then within the body element, we can add in our sections, which we will fill up with content uh, later. <clears throat> so within each of these sections, we added the ID uh, shop, portfolio, and my story. So these IDs correspond with our A elements earlier, where we, for the href attribute, we had uh, hashtag portfolio. So hashtag portfolio goes to ID portfolio, and then hashtag shop here goes to ID shop here, and then uh, href hashtag my story here uh, corresponds with ID my story down here. So these links will now, if you click on them, it will jump to the um, uh, referenced section. As you can see, we ended the he header element here after the navigation bar and the logo. Uh, it's good to use the header elements and the body elements to help uh, you read as well as navigate on your HTML page. So since we're uh, beginning to add in like the bulk and the main section of our HTML page uh, and like the content, uh, that's why we ended it with header here and then we started with body and then we add in our sections elements within our body element. Story six says, I can watch an embedded product video with ID equals to quotation video quotation. So this task wants us to put an embedded video into our HTML page and also have an ID reference video. So to do that, we will apply the iframe reference. Uh, so earlier we added three sections. So for this video, I thought it best fit it into my my story section. So within my section element, I applied my iframe element, but I also want to note that I also use a division element. So within the section element, I applied a division element, and within that division element, I applied the iframe element, which is specifically the video. The reason why I applied a division element is the division element allows you to, uh, one, apply formatting styling later in CSS, and two, it uh, gives a frame um, for the video. So essentially, since I wanted to align my video to the left, uh, in my div element here, you can see that I use the attribute align and then quota equal quotation left and then quotation. And then you can see in style, I applied a width, which is 100%, which will uh, automatically fill the page and then it will align it to the left. And then at the bottom here, it's not necessary, but I just added some uh, text, um, you know, to fill into that frame that we created. So the div, the div element, the division element is just a frame. and I. Within the division element, I just added some text, you know, uh, to give some content. The SRC, which is source. So this is where you will apply your uh, video link. So for me, I just applied randomly one of my YouTube videos as the link. So in the beginning of the video, I had mentioned it's good to read, uh, give a full read through of all the instructions. Uh, so the reason why is because, for example, here, user story seven all the way to user story 12, we can essentially uh, complete six of these points all in one go. And the reason why it's is that it just relates to one element and it's just like slight little adjustments uh, to that element. So in user story seven says, my landing page has a form ele element with a corresponding ID form. And then in eight, it wants us to add an input field for uh, email. And then nine, 10 are just adjustments to the email element. And then for 11, uh, it wants us to create a submit button after that email ele uh, input element and then uh, when you click submit, it uh, redirects to a specified link. So user story seven to user story 12 will fit within that form element. Uh, so if we go to our editor page, uh, you can see that I ended the body section and then I started the footer section. And then within footer, I added the form element and within the form element, uh, you can see I included the input elements, uh, which includes the email and to the submit button. So in my original outline, I for my idea of the project, I thought at the 
very end of my page, I could have a section where the user can input a comment or uh, a question for me and then um, submit their email so that I could respond back to them. So I put this into the footer section because the footer will indicate the very end of the page. Let's go ahead and check each of these off. So for user story seven it says my landing page has a form element with a corresponding ID equals to quotation form quotation. So within our footer element, we added our form element and in our form element, we have the ID equals to quotation form quotation here. So that checks off seven. We'll move to user story eight. Within the form, there is an input field with ID email where I can enter an email address. So within that form element, we had an input element with the ID equals to quotation email quotation here, and then the type equals to quotation email quotation, and then the type will allow a box where you, the user can type an email as seen below here. And then, uh, so that checks off user story eight, and then we'll go to user story nine. It says the email, input field should have a placeholder text to let the user know what the field is for. So uh, as mentioned in previous videos, the placeholder attribute will show this gray text as an example of what the user should type in. And so we added that attribute here within the input element uh, for email. So placeholder attribute and then equals to quotation. And then my placeholder text was what email would you like to be responded to? Uh, question mark quotation. And then you can see that as a gray text below here. Um, and then that should check off user story nine. So we'll go to user story 10. The hashtag email input field uses HTML5 validation to confirm that the enter text is an email address. So we can achieve that by adding a required attribute. So I added that at the very end here within the input uh, email element. So that should check off 10. So then moving to user story 11, it says within the form, there is a submit input of a corresponding ID uh, equals to quotation submit quotation. So um, this wants us to add a submit uh, button. So uh, that's what I added here at the very end, input and then ID equals to quotation submit quotation. And then the type equals to quotation submit quotation. So the, the type will allow a submit button or like a button in general and then you can change the text of that button by uh, using the attribute value, which I did here. So value equals to uh, quotation as now quotation. Uh, and then for user story 12, it says when I click the submit element, the email is submitted to a static page. Um, use this URL. Um, so this free codecamp.com. So this is a bit uh, strange, but to do that, you actually add the link up in the form ID element, uh, which is up here, action equals to uh, quotation and then that uh, specific link that uh, the task gave us. So it, it doesn't actually go into the input element, but it goes into the form element. User story 13 says the nav bar should always be at the top of the viewport and we can do this by uh, using CSS. So header will reference our header element in the HTML. Um, so in the top attribute, we will just put zero px, which means um, from from the top, there's zero uh, space like spacing. So that will essentially be at the very top. User story fourteen says my product landing page should have at least one media query. So we added uh, at media into our CSS, saying uh, max width five hundred px. So if it's five hundred um, px or less. Uh, our body content will have the flex wrap attribute uh, wrap, which means that uh, if it's 500 px or less, the content will bump into the next line. User story 15, our last story says, my product landing page should utilize CSS flexbox at least once. Uh, we accomplished this earlier in our header uh, CSS instructions using uh, the display and justify uh, content attributes. So display colon flex essentially transformed our header element in HTML into a container and then the justify content attribute uh, colon space dash between instructed that the items the elements within that container um, will have spaces in between them if we go to um, the free code camp uh, test script and then we select product landing page run the test we've essentially completed the project therefore we've completed part one of this video so in this part two of the video, I'm just going to show you guys uh, some elements I've added in CSS and HTML to just poly polish up and make uh, the project look more friendly. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go 
uh, back to HTML and fill out those two previous sections that uh, we had skipped. So the first section was shop and the second section was portfolio. The first is our uh, shop section. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to add a division element and within that division element I'm going to add an image element. So this goes right just right before the se uh, shop section. And then within the sh shop section I'm just going to add some text. So I used uh, the second heading H2 to apply towards the text. The reason why I put the image element here within a div element is because uh, this will allow me to actually format uh, both the division element and the image element. So the division element acts like a container which uh, holds the image and that will allow me to kind of uh, format the frame. Moving on to our second section which is the portfolio section. Uh, I just want to show two things. First is YouTube videos and then second is software projects. So I'm going to add two division elements. So my first division element will be my YouTube videos. So I've added heading to YouTube videos and then a YouTube logo up here which I've used the IMG element. So if I scroll down I'll just quickly show you guys. So the first was my IMG element which is this YouTube logo here and then H2 is my uh, heading to YouTube videos and then P element is a paragraph which I use uh, to give a small description and then the second division element is so for projects so if we keep scrolling down you can see that I've added uh, kind of like a smartphone logo and then I added a bunch of BRs for vertical spacing so each BR just represents a vertical space and then uh, I've added um, software projects as my heading two, and then uh, another P element for um, which stands for paragraph to give a brief description. Okay, so then the next thing I'm going to do in HTML is add a background image for our, our page. So I'm going to add a division element first, and then within the division element, the ing element, the link to the picture, and then just note that I've added a class attribute stretch, uh, which I will. A reference later in CSS to apply some additional formatting and then all uh, we can just put background and then dash uh, image all is um, the text that would appear if the link did not work so let's go over to CSS and I'll quickly run through uh, the elements that I added to give uh, my page some design and formatting so the first thing I did was change the font so I used at import to uh, import a Google font um, to apply to my page. Uh, next was uh, to format the body section of the HTML which can be seen here. So essentially font family uh, new night just references the link up here and then color is uh, your font color which I chose to be white. Background color is just background color. Uh, line height is the spacing in between text and then for width, I want it to, uh, to automatically be 100% uh, whichever viewport uh, this page will appear. Is dot uh, period stretch, which goes back to referencing the background image, which I wrote class equals to stretch here. So uh, essentially, I've made it so that uh, the background image will fill complete, completely uh, H1. This will apply. Um, to all the heading ones in HTML. So font size 1.5 EM. EM is just uh, a unit. And then uh, I wanted to apply the color white. Uh, so you can see I've done something similar for both uh, heading two here and then heading three. And then moving on to A. Uh, A will be formatting all those um, A elements we had in HTML, the ones that gave uh, provide um, the linking ability. So our navigation bar up here, you, you've noticed that Ivory Dying Portfolio Shop and My Story have turned white. And then a hover is uh, essentially if you hover over this, you can see that there's an underlined uh, on the link. The next thing I wanted to do was uh, to format my sections with the ID reference. So you can see that to uh, format those uh, sections that had the ID reference. For ID references you would use a hashtag in CSS versus like um, if it was the class attribute you would start with uh, period. So hashtag shop uh, 
uh, applies to this section here, section ID shop, and then hashtag portfolio will apply to section ID portfolio, and then uh, hashtag my story will apply to uh, section ID my story, and then hashtag story layover will apply to this division element within that uh, my story uh, section. So in each of these, I just applied like margin left, which is like how much you want it to be pushed uh, from the left side. And then margin top is how much you want it to be pushed from the top. And then uh, this display flex, which will apply a container like characteristic uh, to that section. And then justify content, as we mentioned before, will create space uh, within that container. And then width is how wide you want it to appear. So uh, I've done something similar for each of these um, hashtag uh, for uh, hashtag references to the sections. The next thing I want to do is format my background image. So uh, you can see here a hashtag background will reference to this division element where I inputted the um, background image element inside it. Uh, so essentially I just instructed it to be um, width 100% and then height 100% which will fill um, the background completely. Uh, so position is fixed so that the perspective of the background is always still. And uh, so left uh, 0px just essentially means uh, it starts immediately from the left. Uh, top means it starts immediately from the top, so it covers the top as well. And then for Z index, it just means uh, negative one just means that it will um, be behind. So all the other elements are essentially right now assuming at zero. So negative one just means that it will be behind. So therefore, all elements will be in front of the background image. So after the hashtag background, we move on to uh, period submit in the CSS. So this uh, applies formatting to our submit button down here, uh, which in HTML is right here. So the reason why we use we start with uh, period instead of the hashtag is because we applied a class attribute here versus hashtag refers to uh, elements with ID. So um, with just the size. Uh, so the, essentially the width of that button uh, padding is the spacing between uh, this text as now and uh, the border and then uh, so background color royal blue is the, the background color uh, color is the text color right here which is white and then border radius is how much you want this border um, how thick you want that border to be and then cursors uh, colon pointer is what you want your um, your mouse pointer here to look like when you uh, hover over the button. So right now, pointer makes um, it look like a finger when you hover over it. And then the next one is period email. So that will format our email button right here, uh, which in HTML is right here, our input element with the class attribute email. So again, as noted, since it's a class attribute, we start with period. The display colon block attribute essentially transformed our email um, input element into a container. It's similar to the division element. Uh, width and height will address the size of um, this box. And then padding essentially is essentially the spacing uh, between the border and the text. So the first will represent top and bottom and then the second will represent left and right. So background color, uh, here we use RGB. Uh, so FF I guess is just white. And then border, uh, I specified the thickness of the border and the design of it which is solid and then the color. Uh, and then the border radius. So border dash radius is just um, how, how if you want to round out uh, your corners. So the larger, the more round it is. So I just picked 0 0.25, which is like a slight subtle um, to make it more kind of like friendly looking. So down here, period text, uh, similar to up here, we just applied similar attributes to make uh, the question um, text box to be consistent with the email text box. 
And so that's essentially it. So if I change the view to uh, full page view, it should look like this. If you guys found this video helpful, please do uh, give it a like and uh, a subscribe. And if you guys want to give any feedback or comments below, that would be much uh, appreciated. Um, I will provide you guys uh, the link to my project down below so you can use it as reference. Uh, I'll also give you guys uh, the link in the video description to Free Code Camp as well as the Code Pen Editor. Uh, so thank you so much again for watching and I will catch you guys in the next video.